In this presentation, in fact a series of three presentations, I will explain you the principles of activity crashing. Why do we want to do activity crashing? There are different reasons to crash projects by crashing the activities. One of the elements may be that the time that we calculated with the duration of the activities as we assume them is too long and we have to reduce the duration of the project. Another reason, of course, can be that when the duration is too long, we may have fines that we have to pay and fines, it increases the cost of the project. Reducing the duration of the project also will reduce the amount of penalties we have to pay. There are other reasons, of course, if we have a project and we can finish it earlier, Typically, we can get what they call a reward, a reward for early termination of the contract. Of course, there is also the fact that a shorter project will need less project management and that also has an impact on the total cost of the project. In this first part, I will look at the calculation of the crash cost per time unit for the different activities and we will see how this actually works. In the table here, we have an overview of the normal duration and the normal cost of the activities of the project. And next to that, we have a table with the crashed duration and the cost. When we are going to crash those activities, we want to find out what is the crash cost per time unit. When we're looking at the crash cost, we make the assumption that the link between duration and cost is linear. So when we have the normal duration with the normal cost, we have the crashed cost and the crashed duration, the evolution between the two is linear. It's not necessarily true, but it is an assumption that will help us to get in fact an easy calculation. The linearization of the problem makes it for us a lot more interesting and easier. The first thing to do is to say what is the crash cost per time unit, delta C over delta T. So we have the difference in costs, co uh, crash cost minus the normal cost, divided by the time. So this is the formula, this is in fact the slope of this line, and using this formula, we can calculate the crash cost per time unit for all the activities. Let's have a look at some of those activities. First of all, we have the activity A. A is the first activity, and we know that the crash cost for A is 24. So we have 24. The normal cost is 18, and the normal time is 7. Crash time is 3. So we find here a difference of 6 over 4, which gives us 1.5k per period. So that's the first calculation that we have to complete to see what's happening with those activities. That's for activity A. Let's have a look at the special case of activity B. Activity B, here we have the crash cost is 5, minus 5 for the normal cost, divided by the time difference, 2 minus 2, is in fact 0 over 0. Now we know from mathematics that we cannot divide by 0, and that 0 divided by 0 is indeterminate. Now this basically means we cannot crash B. It's not possible to crash B, so we have to take that into account, not crashable. And we cannot say there what some people tend to do, that the crash cost is equal to zero. That's not correct. We did A and B. Let's have a look at activity C. For activity C, we find the difference in cost is 20 minus 14 divided by 5 minus 3, which is 6 divided by 2, is basically 3k. 
we can continue that for d. For d, we find the value five, 9 minus 5 divided by 6 minus 2, which gives us 4 divided by 4 is in fact 1k. Now we can continue that and I will show you the table when we are going to the next part of the crashing exercise. But first of all, I have to tell you that there is another special case. We also have the activity G, which is also not crashable. And the others we can crash without problems. This was the first part of the crashing exercise. I will see you in the second part to look further in the crashing itself and we will start crashing the network diagram or the project. See you there. Thank you and bye-bye.